front stretch here at the Port Royal Speedway. Joining us again tonight, Randy Satchford with the commentary. And Randy, another star-studded field on hand for this Tuscarora 50. This will be the 18th one of the, that they've ever had here at Port Royal. Yeah, John, it's a, it's a real shame. I've enjoyed coming to the races all summer long here to the Port Royal Speedway. It's a real shame that tonight's the final race of the season here for the Super Sprint and, and Late Model Division. But we certainly have a fine field of cars on hand. We notice that we have uh, Rich Eichelberger here, and I believe Richard Lupo may be uh, on hand tonight to battle it out for the checkered flag, and this the Tuscarora 50. Yeah, we were just up in the uh, pits just moments ago. We talked with Bob Weikert up there and uh, Jimmy Nace and a lot of the drivers. Uh, while we're getting ready to go with the uh, first warm-up period here for the sprint cars, we'll break away and we'll go to those interviews that we just done just minutes ago down in the pit area, Randy. Standing here with uh, the 1985 track champion, Keith Kaufman, the Al Hamilton number 77. Keith, uh, tonight's probably the biggest race of the season, uh, the Tuscarora 50, everybody's here. A lot of publicity, uh, a lot of people up in the stands tonight, and you're going to have some pretty tough competition as we look down through these pits here. Well, it's a big race, uh, a lot of money tonight, and, you know, they always have a exceptionally good uh, field of cars for this race. Well, I finally was able to catch up with you here on the amount of track championships you have. You've got <laughs> quite a few of them, uh, six now to be exact. And uh, the, there's a rumor out you guys may do more outlaw racing next year. What's the story there? Well, we've been talking about it, and uh, it seems like uh, as of right now, that's what we're going to do next year. Uh, well, you're a professional race car driver, and that's all you do for a living, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I would think, too, that uh, you would really be, if you're going to be a professional, you have to go where the money's at, right? Well, it's true. You know, like the last couple of years, our, our deal was to run around here and uh, you know, try to run for the track championships at all the tracks, and uh, you know, we pretty much accomplished that. And now we'll just try something different. Uh, kind of tired of being a big fish in a small pond. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of fun to go to other places and race too. You know, it's fun to race here too, but uh, you know, it's just a different. It's more of a challenge. Do you feel it keeps you sharper all the way around when you have to set up for different race tracks, different situations, different competition? Well, it definitely makes you sharper and keeps you on your toes more. And uh, plus, you're running against the best in the country all the time, and that you know that keeps you a little bit sharper too. Well, uh, you know, if you if you're not here on a regular basis next year, you're going to have a lot of fans that are going to be disappointed that they won't be getting to see you out there. But uh, uh, then again, I guess there's, there comes a time when you have to say so long to these guys. I mean, you're moving up. You want to maybe advance your career a little bit, and probably would be hard to do staying here at Port Royal forever, right? Well, you never know. Just whatever comes along, but. Uh, I've always wanted to do this, and you know, the opportunity just came around now, so we just decided to do it, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, then uh, from what we can tell, it's going to be Keith Kaufman, Al Hamilton, 70 or uh, an 86, right? Yeah, right. Okay, thank you very much, Keith. Thank you. Okay, standing here in the uh, Bob Weikert livestock pit area, and uh, Bob, Doug Wolfgang has been turning the sprint car world just inside out. I know you made a prediction at the beginning of the 1985 season that you guys, once you got teamed up and going, would win 50 features this year. Bob, how many do you have right now? Well, we have 43, and uh, the season's getting short, but we're going to make the 50. It looks like you're going to make it, uh, Bob. You had to be really super happy with the uh, performance your driver, Doug Wolfgang, turned in here on uh, Labor Day. Well, I wasn't here, but uh, everybody told me he'd done a super job. And, uh, you know, a lot of the credit also uh, has to go to my own engine builder, Davey Brown. Without him, uh, you couldn't go fast either, but it's a combination, and uh, I think it's the best that's ever been put together in a sprint car. That's what you told us when we talked to you back in June when you were here at Port Royal Speedway, and uh, I believe you're beginning to make uh, a lot of believers out of these people that are standing around us here tonight. Well, I'll tell you, when they uh, made this 410 cubic inch limit for next year, uh, they done uh, me a big favor. They fell into a trap, and I'll tell you, I'm predicting here tonight, in 1986, we'll win 75 features. 75? That's 25 more than this year, Bob. And we'll do it a lot easier next year. Well, Bob, we want to wish you the best of luck tonight. You got some competition here tonight. It's never a cakewalk here at Port Royal Speedway, and we hope that you make that 50 feature mark this year, Bob. You was talking about tonight and the competition. We're ready for them. Good luck to you. Uh, standing here in the uh, Randy Wolf pits, and we'll try and get a word with Randy. Randy, 
Uh, we're really happy to see you back here for the Tuscarora 50. Uh, you got the new Osborne car now. How, how do you like the new Osborne car? Uh, it works real well. Yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, uh, tonight a lot of competition setting around you. You got Doug Wolfgang on one side, Keith Coffin on the other. Jimmy Nace has been running good with his new uh, Osborne car, and Stevie Smith Jr. is on a bit of a hot streak. Uh, could you pick out one of these guys that you feel you have to beat to win this thing here tonight? Well, you named a lot of tough competition, and there's even more besides that. It's pretty hard to tell. It's a long race, 50 laps. I would think it's the old saying that you got to finish them to win them. Well, Randy, in order for you to pick up a feature win here at Port Royal Speedway, you have to win tonight, and we hope you do win it tonight. Thanks a lot. You bet. Good luck to you, Randy. Thanks. The uh, junior pit area, and it looks like they got quite a bit of work going on here around the injectors. Uh, Steve, do you have a problem in there? No, not really. We're just checking everything over and messing with this barrel valve a little bit. Yeah. Got a lot of competition here tonight, uh, Stevie. Who do you think you're going to have to beat to win this thing here tonight? Oh, there's several guys. I'm not really sure yet. Okay, well, look, uh, you put on a grandstand performance here the other Wednesday night. We hope you can come back with a repeat here tonight. Yeah, all we can do is try. Okay, thank you, Steve. Yep. Standing here with Scott Tobias, driver of the Roy Morrow Hardy's Family House for Restaurant number 880. Scott, uh, the competition really on hand here tonight for this Tuscarora 50. It is an extended uh, length event. How do you feel you stack up here against the likes of Doug Wolfgang, Keith Kaufman, and uh, some of the other fine drivers? Well, I think we can run as fast as them. Uh... Uh, the driver just got good in the right frame of mind and, uh, you know, just keep the pedal down. Is it going to be another case like on Monday where you can't win the race early? You have to kind of stay out there, hang in there, save your tires? Yeah, I'd say uh, you can't get too excited when you got 50 laps to uh, win a race, you know. Well, one thing's for sure, uh, if you can't win them on the first lap, you can definitely lose them on the first lap, right? Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> okay, uh, Scott, we want to wish you luck. We'll be looking for that 880 out front tonight. Thank you. You bet. Chris Ash, one of the team drivers on the E&G Classics uh, racing team. Chris, of course, out of Woodbine, Maryland. The cars are kept in Columbia. Chris, time's running out here at Boreal Speedway. If you're going to pick up a win, you're going to have to do it tonight. And this has got to be a tough night to win here. Boy, it sure is. I'd like to win. team's been working real hard. And, you know, we just like to pull one out for the end of the year, you know, finish up the year. Are you gonna Are you gonna continue racing after this race here tonight? Are you gonna finish out the year at some other tracks or? Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna run at Lincoln because Lincoln's only 10 minutes from our shop, so they're having a big 75 lap tomorrow night, and then we're gonna run the regular shows, you know, finish out the year. With the coming of the new engine rule, uh, supposedly uh, for 1986, have you guys kind of pulled your horns back here, and, and and is it a kind of a wait and see what's gonna happen attitude right now? Well, that's pretty definite, and they're we're trying to sell our big block stuff. And I'm running a, you know, 406 steel motor right now, and I think we'll be pretty competitive next year. Okay, uh -huh. okay, uh, Chris, uh, you and your brother Darren, we'd like to see you guys up front. We hope that boy, this would be a great race to win here tonight, wouldn't it? Boy, I sure would. Okay, Chris, good luck to you. Okay, thank you. You bet. Standing here in the Jimmy Nays pits, and we're trying to get a word with Jimmy. Uh, Jim, it's a Tuscarora 50. I know that. Uh, you are really looking forward to this race here tonight. It's one that you would like to win again. Yeah, you're right. We won this one. This is the first race we ever won. And uh, we've been trying ever since. It was 76 when we won it. We got close different times. We run second last year to Wolfgang. We run second to him here on Monday. And I hope he can run second to us tonight. Yeah, I tell you, you got beat here on Labor Day, but it took the best in the country to do it. Yeah, we're working pretty good right now, and I just hope everything goes good tonight and the rest of the season for us. Okay, I'd say if you had to follow anybody through, that number 29 would be a pretty good candidate. Yeah, I'd say if you're pretty close to him, you'll be near the front. Well, good luck in the heat race, Jimmy, because we know that's equally as important. It's important where you start in a big race like this. If you can get out front, you can run, kind of run your own race, right? That's right. Uh, like I said, things have been sort of turned around for us here a little bit and then hopefully we'll get them tonight. We're sure rooting for you up there, Jimmy. Okay, thank you. You bet. Hey, standing here uh, right at the back of the Polaris snowmobile, Joey Gravino race trailer, and uh, Joey, word has it that you're going to hang it up this year. Well, we don't want to quit. Uh, we either need a sponsor or a good ride. We can't afford it any longer on our own. Uh, they changed cubic inches on us for again for next year. And I can't keep making wholesale changes to stay after the race. And we don't want to quit. 
We'd like to have a good ride or a good sponsor. We don't want you to quit either. That night that you picked up one of the Twin 20 uh, events here, uh, we commented that uh, as you rolled that number 28G into the winner's circle, we sure hope that you take the for sale sign off. But then you are looking for a sponsor, right? Well, we're looking for a sponsor or a good ride, one or the other, yes. You know, Fred Kleck's building some race cars over here in Mifflin Town. I don't know the gentleman. I heard about him. Uh, I've just heard bits and pieces. I don't know much of it. I don't know what kind of driver is hunting for. If it's hunting for somebody that uh, wants a race, uh, three, four nights a week, that's not for me. Two nights a week, uh, fine. Uh, that's something like my what, what I want. Well, I know one thing that uh, he is looking for is a stand on the gas type of driver. And and uh, I can tell you, Joey Gramino is just that. Thank you for the... Okay, we're back. Uh, very interesting, Bob Weikert uh, making that 75 feature win prediction for 1986. That's unbelievable. I mean, to win 75 features is just astronomical. If any driver running for me could even win 30, it would be fantastic. I understand Keith Kaufman has 29 to date. Is it only 29? I thought he was up around 30 something. Uh, maybe he is. I read in a Patriot this week that it was uh, right around 29, but needless to say, he's been That's somewhat funny, overshadowed. Yeah, yeah that, it's been kind of, uh, he's been kind of upstaged by Doug Wolfgang. He has uh, 43 wins, I do believe. Maybe he'll pick one of them up here tonight, Randy. Very and possibly. We are under green now. This is warm-up. The first warm-up period. this first warm-up period uh, watching some of the cars that are out there Keith Coffin just went by your screen yeah, and as we look up into the corner the number 19 of uh, Stevie Smith jr. running very strong out there as well we have some very fast cars Joe Gravino turning some very fast laps we saw a good battle there for a while on the screen between Randy Wolf and Keith Kaufman and that's certainly gonna show that the kind of competition we're gonna have here tonight at Port Royal Speedway yeah, that's for sure. Uh, all the heavyweights are with us here tonight, Randy. We'll be back with the second round of warm-ups for sprint cars right after this. Okay, Randy, second round of warm-ups being uh, pushed out onto the speedway now. Uh, this Tuscarora 50 race has only been one man in the history of Fort Roll Speedway to ever record three consecutive wins here in the Tuscarora 50, being Mitch Smith. He did it in 1968, 1969, and 1970. And uh, another gentleman by the name of Lynn Paxton, uh, driving uh, the Boots aluminum car, came back and won it in 79, and I think he won it in 1974 as well. He's the only two-time winner. And all the rest of the wins have went to, uh, well, Bobby Allen, Doug Wolfgang will be the defending race winner here this year. Jimmy Nace won in 1976. And Smokey Snellbaker, also uh, the other driver that won three, however, his were not in, con in concession. He won in succession. He won them in, uh, there was a year there that he missed and then came back and won again. So not too many drivers have been very dominant in with this Tuscarora 50 race. Yeah, being that it's a 50-lap race, it's a long way to go for these sprint cars. And it takes a real good setup man and a great uh, racing team to be able to do quite well. Well, i uh, just seen the 2A car go by. I believe uh, Richard Lupo doing the driving there. We saw, I believe, that same race car uh, being driven by Bobby Allen here earlier in the 
season, Randy. That's right. And also, Kenny Jacobs is here in the car number 4J, the Reno Auto Cars car. So it's good to see some of these great drivers here. Right there, you see Smokey Snellbaker going into turn number three. And that Mike Jablonski, number 33, Randy. Doug Wolfgang, Randy, in that Wager Livestock number 29. They've got the, the uh, small block engine in tonight, and he's come to a slowing down over on the back stretch. Hopefully he doesn't have a problem already. Well, one thing's for sure, John, they have a backup car here, and if Doug needs to use it, he certainly will. Here we got a problem off turn four, Ty Scott. Uh, some wing brackets evidently breaking or coming loose on that race car, and he has got to have a minimum of vision there, Randy. Yeah, but he knows his way back to the pit area, and uh, hopefully he'll have another one to stick right on. Okay, that's going to bring out a yellow here momentarily until we get Ty Scott in that Scotty's fashion, number 28, back in the pit area. And uh, we'll be picking it up with green here right after this. Okay, Randy, uh, looks like we have 33 sprint cars on hand here tonight, a really super field and a lot of heavyweights in that pit area. In the first heat tonight, sprint car heat, uh, the first row will be featuring the number 5H of Gary Hauser, and alongside him will be the number 11 of Chris Criswell. Row number two on the inside, and at third starting position from McVeigh Town is Kenny Smith in car number 40, and alongside him from Higgins, Pennsylvania, in the Lucas Mining 98 is Alan Klinger. In that third row, in the fifth starting position, in the number 28G will be Joey Gravino out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and matched up along the side. Alongside him in the number 5 W will be Randy Wolf out of Mechanicsburg, PA. Okay, row number 4 on the inside and at 7th starting position. Driving car number 69N, Donnie Kreitz Jr. And alongside him, the winningest sprint car driver, driver in the country today, the Weikert's Livestock number 29 is Doug Wolfgang. Starting in that 5th row inside, the ninth starting position in the number 90 will be Alan Ruth. And matched up beside him in the number 2 will be Steve Sigel, your pass point leader. Okay, and bringing up the rear in car number 2L from McAllisterville is Bob Landis. Okay, a pretty good uh, host of drivers in this first heat, Randy. And, hey, you got Doug Wolfgang starting right there, you know, in that uh, eighth starting position. He's going to be looking to get by Donnie Kreitz, Randy Wolf, Joey Gravino, Alan Klinger. Hey, he's going to have some, you know, he's going to have his work cut out for him here. He certainly will, John, and we'll be back with the start of this heat event right after this. Okay, Randy, cars lined up over on the back stretch. We see Gary Howes there setting on that pole starting position alongside of him. Chris Chris, well. Well, Chris is missing from the uh, field to that. Alan move. Klinger. Alan Klinger up, and Klinger jumps to an early lead as the green flag wave. Here they come off turn four. Alan Klinger will take them down into that first and second turn, Randy. Alan Klinger, your leader, as they head through turns one and two. We look over on the back stretch now. Joey Gravino has moved up to second. Gary Howes there runs third. And here comes the number 69 of Donnie Kreitz, Jr. What a race we have here now, John. Doug Wolfgang runs in that sixth position. Here they come, Alan Klinger. It's all news to tell now, John, as they head into turns one and two. Doug Wolfgang, you can see him there working the inside of Randy Wolf as they head down the back stretch. Right in front of those two are the number five of Gary Hauser and the 69 of Donnie Kreitz, Jr. Here they come off turn four. Alan Klinger, your leader, Joe Gravino, runs second. They're going around that track at a frightening speed, Randy. Okay, Alan Klinger still your leader as they head up the back stretch. It's and still Joe Gravino in that second spot. Now Randy Wolf begins to duck down underneath the number 69 of Donnie Kreitz Jr. off turn four. Okay, we got a 19.64 that last time around on the number 98 of Alan Klinger as he continues to lead this event. What a battle we have for that third position going into turn number three. Randy Wolf right down on the inside of the racetrack. Donnie Kreitz up high. Wolf's going to take over third position. Randy Wolf, now your new leader as they head through turns one and two, or Alan Klinger rather, still your leader as they head through turns one and two. Joe Gravino still runs second. Randy Wolf has established that third spot, Randy. This is a fantastic race here. What a battle there. Down on the inside, Doug Wolfgang now moves into that fourth position. Alan Klinger continues to lead. 
watch them as they work through thirds one and two. Randy Wolf down on the inside of Joe Gravino. He moves up to second. No other sights set on the number 98. Now a Valley Flinger, Randy. Okay, we have five laps to go in this event. And Randy Wolf now is going to begin to put pressure on the 98 of Alan Klinger as they come off turn four. And Doug Wolfgang right up alongside Joey Gravino as they come by our booth here, Randy. Doug Wolfgang has really not pressed it real hard here in the heat race. Okay, Look but at now this he's... battle for the lead. Randy Wolf now moves up into that number one spot as the camera wide angles. Here they come off turn four. Randy Wolf, your new leader. Alan Klinger will now be relegated to that second spot, Randy. John, this is the fastest I've seen Randy Wolf run all year here at Port Royal. I know he has a couple feature wins at other speedways, but Randy Wolf's looking to finish the year up really strong here at Port Royal. Okay, camera wide angles now. Here comes Randy Wolf, your leader. Here comes Doug Wolfgang. Wolfgang now moves up to second, Randy. And we have two laps to go in this event. Can Doug Wolfgang reel it in on Randy Wolf? I don't know, Randy. I'll tell you, Randy Wolf is really hooked up here tonight. Of course, Doug Wolfgang, you can never count him out. Here they come off turn four. He'll be getting a two laps to go. Or white flag this time, Randy. Okay, he's got about a five car length lead on Wolfgang. Wolfgang slides it in low. The, the groove is low so far tonight, John. Down the back stretch, Wolfgang closes it in just a little bit. Okay, the idea here, Randy, is to win the heat race because that'll put you up near the front in the feature. Here they come on turn four, Randy Wolf trying to hold off Doug Wolfgang, and he does. Randy Wolf picks up the win. Okay, finishes in that second position is the 29 of Doug Wolfgang. Third will go to the 98 of Alan Klinger. Fourth to the 69 N of Donnie Kreitz. Fifth will go to the number 28G of Joe Gravino, and your sixth and final qualifying position goes to the number two of Steve Sigel. Okay, Randy Wolf uh, able to pick up all the marbles here in the heat race. That's got to make you feel good, Randy, on a night like tonight to go out and blow them away in the first heat. It certainly does, but I know he he probably saw Doug Wolf come, gang coming. At least he felt him coming. He'll probably go back and make a few changes to that car before we get to the feature event. Right. Everybody here tonight's trying to beat Doug Wolfgang, uh, and you can bet there was some stopwatches in that pit area being, uh, you know, pressed on Doug Wolfgang, Randy. Certainly so, John. We'll be back with the uh, second heat of sprint cars right after this. Okay, Randy, uh, second heat for sprint cars. The car's being pushed out onto the speedway now. In the first row, we have the number one of Steve Moore in a turnball car, and right alongside him is the number 55 of Tom Baker, a local driver here, Randy. Or Tom Briner, right? Tom right. Briner, sorry about okay. that. Row number two on the inside in that third starting position, the other half of the ENG Classic Racing Team, the car number 17 is Chris Esch, and alongside him in car number 35, the Brewerton, New York transplant, Dave Wickham. Okay, starting in that third row, in the number 26 will be Jimmy Nace in the Camel Express car out of Millerstown. And alongside him in the number 54, the Lawrence, Lawrence Service Center car will be Frankie Kerr. What a row we have here. Row number four, John, on the inside in the Libby's Mobile Homes, number 88 from Lingelstown, Maynard Yanks. And alongside him in the Al Hamilton Contracting Company special from Mifflin Town, Keith Kaufman. Right, your 1985 track champion. Okay, in that next row back will be the fifth row inside, ninth starting position is the number 33 of Smokey Snellbaker, and matched up alongside him in the 4J, a big welcome to Kenny Jacobs. Good to see Kenny Jacobs here for this big prestigious race at Port Royal. And bringing up that final position, the 11th starting spot in car number eight is Rich Eichelberger. Okay, Rich Eichelberger got a long row to hoe there, Randy. He's got he's to get by the likes of... Kenny Jacobs, Smokey Snellbaker, Keith Kaufman, Maynard Yanks, Frankie Kerr, Jimmy Nace. I'll tell you what, that, that that's having your work cut out for you, Randy. Okay, John, and we'll be back with the start of this, the second heat event for sprint cars, right after this. Okay, Randy, cars lined up over on that back stretch. Uh, Steve Moore, your pole setter. And right alongside him, Tom Briner in the number 55. And I think Briner's missing from the field. So that moves Chris Esch up there. Here they come off turn four, Chris Esch. We'll bring them by our camera. There they go into that first and second turn, Jimmy Nace and Chris Esch, Randy. Okay, they're side by side coming out of turn number two. Chris Esch has...
Okay, Randy, uh, third heat for sprint cars. Uh, as we look at the first row here on our lineup sheet, we see uh, it is being occupied by the 6A of Dutch Snyder out of Lewistown, Pennsylvania. And uh, matched up beside him is the number 33 of Van Mayen. That could be a bit of a mismatch there, Randy. It certainly could. I know they put a new engine in the 6A this week. Oh, well, then maybe it isn't. Maybe not. Okay, row number two on the inside, and at third starting position is the 2D of Lance DeWeese, and alongside him in car number 21S from Tulsa, Oklahoma, is Jerry Stone. Starting in that third row inside, the number 28 out of Penargel, Pennsylvania, will be Ty Scott, and matched up beside him is the number 80 of Scott Tobias in that sixth position. Okay, row number four on the inside, and at seventh starting position, driving car number seven is Paul Lotier, and alongside him, is the car number 19, the Creasy Sign Special, Stevie Smith Jr. Right, our feature winner here uh, just this past Wednesday night. Okay, uh, starting in that fifth row inside, the number 4L will be Dan Dietrich. And starting in that 10th starting spot outside of that fifth row is Richard Lupo in the 2A car. Okay, and bringing up the rear in car number four is Hank Gorenson. That's kind of a new name to me, John. Right, I don't believe uh, we've ever had the pleasure of reading that name here at Fort Roll Speedway this year or any other year. I believe he's new here tonight, Randy. Okay, John, we're gonna be watching the pace car now as it pulls down to the inside of the speedway. Dutch Snyder and Van May bring them down off turn number two. From what I understand, John, the 6A, the engine they put in that car is a 427 out of an old coupe. Is that, that right? Yeah, it's all rebuilt. Let's see what it does. Well, it's down near the end of the season, Randy, and, you know, the budget really gets thin at this top part of the year. Here they come off turn four. The whole racetrack just covered with sprint cars, Randy, the full width of this speedway. Okay, John, and just as you called it, Van May shoots into the lead. Scott Tobias runs second. Here comes Jerry Stone. He'll move into third. Dutch Snyder runs fourth. Okay, here they come off turn four. Van May, your leader in that number 33, followed by Scott Tobias, Jerry Stone. And here comes Stevie Smith Jr. on the inside, Paul Atier on the outside. Boy, it's anybody's race right now. Every, you've got to finish at least in that sixth position if you want to qualify through the heat events. And right now, uh, Richard Lupo runs in that sixth spot. Dutch Snyder is non-qualified right at this point, Randy. And we get a 1925 on Van May, so he's considerably slower than Keith Kaufman. Right. Let's he see if Scott Tobias can reel it in on Van May, your leader here, as they work their way off turn four, Randy. Okay, there he is, Van May leading. Scott Tobias runs in that second position. Van May running up on that cushion already, John. A very, a very good shot of Van May as he works his way down this long back stretch here at Port Royal Speedway. Scott Tobias runs at Roy Morrill Hardy's number 880 in that second spot. He is closing the gap a little bit, Randy. Yes, he is, John. Okay, running in that third position is the car number seven of Paul Lutier. And he's a brother-in-law to Scott Tobias. Right. Boy, I'll tell you, Scott Tobias really dove that sprint car into that first turn that last time around, Randy. Here they come off turn four. He's trying to catch Van May. And there you see Paul Latier running in third. Richard Lupo now runs in that fourth position. When we watched that number two A car. We watched Bobby Allen drive that car to a second place finish here. For the butt in the Buzz Running and Memorial Race, Randy. That's very hard. That's exactly right, John. Your top six right now: Van May, Scott Tobias, Paul O'Shear, the 2A of Richard Lupo, and Jerry Stone spins it out in turn number one. And hey, that'll bring out the yellow. He just taps a fence, the inner fence, Randy, very lightly. I don't think he. Uh, he shouldn't have damaged that race car, I wouldn't think. Not at all, I don't think, John. He'll probably just restart him. Well, there's your leader, Van May, in the number 33. And uh, like uh, you mentioned, Randy, he is not on the pace of Keith Coffin here. Uh, you know, it would have been interesting to see if, if you know, if Doug Wolfgang could have gotten out in front in his heat race, he would have probably laid on the loud pedal for at least a lap or two. But, uh, hey, that's got to have Keith Coffin guessing. You know, you go in there with the fast time, you'd say, well, that may not be fast enough. That's exactly right. Uh, Doug Wolfgang won't really stick it out the way Kaufman does in a heat race. Uh, he'll kind of take it easy on the car a little bit. So I think you'll see these two competitors will be the mainstays in the feature event tonight. Probably so, Randy. Well, we'll be back with the restart right after this. Okay, John, we're back. 
And I took a look around here at the Speedway tonight on that last yellow, John. The place is packed with people everywhere. Yes, it is, Randy. A full capacity crowd. Here they come off turn four. Scott Tobias. Trying to reel in the number 33. But Van May as they head through turns one and two. They're side by side, Randy. Okay, but Van May will have the line out of turn number two. Gets a little bit wide. And we're close going into turn number three. And Okay, Richard Lupo was challenging the number seven of here and now Lupo has come up with a problem just as I mentioned his name Randy okay that'll move Jerry Stone up into that sixth and final qualifying position there they go down the back stretch Van May leads them in Johnny has just a little bit more smoke than what Scott Tobias has at this point it looks like it Randy here they come off turn four only two laps to go on your leader Randy and right there's the battle for that third position Stevie Smith Jr. down on the inside of the number seven of Paul Latier. Here they come out of turn number two and down the long back stretch. Paul Latier continues to run third. In the meantime, Van May comes around and there'll be one more lap to go. There's your leader, Van May, on that. He'll be working on the checkered flag lap, Randy, this time around. He works at number 33 off turn two and heads it down the back stretch. He has actually begun to pull away here from Scott Tobias in the number 880. Here they come off turn four, Randy. Okay, and he'll get the victory. Van May picks up the win. Finishing second is car number 880 of Scott Tamias. Third will go to the seven of Paul Lothier. Fourth to the 19 of Stevie Smith Jr. Fifth to the 21S of Jerry Stone. And sixth and final qualifier is the number four of Hank Gorenson. That'll relegate Ty Scott to the consolation, John. Right, and the consolation isn't going to be no cakewalk tonight either, Randy. No, it's not. Okay, uh, we want to thank uh, Merch Ford out of McAllisterville, Pennsylvania, providing us with a lot of the, uh, you know, transportation accommodations during the whole entire week here at the Juniata County Fair. And uh, we just wanted to mention those good folks out there at Merch Ford in McAllisterville, Pennsylvania, Randy. We'll be right back with our next event, which will be the second heat for late models right after this. Okay, uh, we're just about ready to go with our sprint car consolation event, the last chance to make this star-studded field here for tonight's Tuscarora 50. And joining us in the booth here, uh, we switched some headsets around, some microphones. We've got Bob Corpenning up here in the booth with us. Welcome uh, welcome to the team here tonight, uh, Bob. Hey, thanks a lot. It's, uh, it's good to be here. Well, uh, what do you think of the night's field here at Port Royal Speedway? Well, you know, it's a big race for Port Royal. It's a last race, and uh, it's just good to see such uh, many good, uh, a lot of good teams coming out here tonight to go for the big money. That's for sure. We were down in the pit area earlier tonight, and uh, we you know we talked with uh, Bob Weikert, and uh, he made a, you know, he made a very, very provocative statement. He said that next year, him, Doug Wolfgang, and the Browns would win 75 feature events. Well, you know he said 50 this year, and everybody thought, well, sure, but uh, he's pretty close to that right now. And if they keep doing what uh, they're doing right now and uh, start off the, the season next year fresh like that, I got a feeling that uh, they could do 75 pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's making a lot of fans believers out there. Yeah, they, like they have 42 or 43 wins right now. He's got a lot of racing yet to go, Bob. Well, like Doug Wolfgang was telling me here, he said, uh, Right now, he's having all the good luck in the world. He knows that. In sprint car racing, you can get a flat tire, break a bolt real easy. A wing could fall down. Right now, he said he's just very lucky. He said he's not God. He understands that things can happen. But right now, he just loves what's happening, and so does Bob Weicker. That's for sure. Uh, you know, when it goes good, it goes good. And uh, things have really, really fell in place for the Wolfgang Weicker team here. Well, Bob, we're going to sit back here. We're going to watch this uh, sprint car Concy. You might as well stay on board okay. here with us. We're looking at Gary Hauser, our pole setter, and matched up alongside him is Smokey Snellbaker in the number 33. Bob, here they come off turn four, Love and it you. looks like Hauser is going to be taking them down the first Good view, good view, going into turn one. Terrific view. Okay, we're watching uh, Smokey Snellbaker now. He's regained the lead from Gary Hauser in the number five H, Bob, as they work their way through turns three and four. Yeah. Here comes your leader, Smokey Snellbaker. Bob, you know, as you look out across that field right there, there's really no slow cars out there. You know, I mean, it's tough to make one of these events. Uh. You better believe it. They're all trying hard. You can see that, the way they're going into turns. Smokey's really got that 33 really running tonight. Exactly. There goes Rich Eichelberger in the number eight. 
Michael Berger has moved up into that third spot. He'll have his sights set on the number five H of Gary Hauser. You know, word has it, Bob, that there's a new team going to maybe be formulated for the driver we see leading this event, Smokey Snellbaker, for next year. Yeah, I'm hearing the same thing. I'm hearing the same thing. We're just going to have to wait and see. And it looks like we're going to have a problem here on the number 90 of Alan Ruth. He's come to a stop right in front of us here, Bob. As the camera swings around, we'll be picking up Alan Ruth, who sets right there. You can see him on the screen. And uh, Alan, one of the rising stars among the sprint car ranks, I feel. Yeah, uh, the kid really tries hard. He missed a lot of the season. He said he was trying to save some money for his sprint car. If uh, people can remember his first time out, he had a flip up here, and he was taken to the hospital, and he was injured slightly. Well, the thing about it was his parents did not even know he had a sprint car. And when his parents were called and said, your son's in the hospital, he's in a sprint car accident. His parents didn't even know what a sprint car was. So I think he started out uh, kind of differently than most people do. Probably started out on the left foot for sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, what would your mother say if uh, they called him some night and said, Bob Corpenning was involved in a serious sprint car accident? Well, my mom wouldn't believe it because she knows I don't want to get into those sprint cars. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do any racing, Bob? Uh, years ago, I used to help on a sprint car, number 31, Jim Angeloff. He ran mostly Lincoln and uh, Williams Grove. He came to Port Royal now and then. He was a low buck operation. One time he said, take it off for warm-ups, and I did. And I was scared. I mean, I, I'm just not uh, fit for sprint car racing. I love reporting it and watching them and talking about it. But uh, I'll leave it up to those guys. They do such a good job. <laughs> well, you certainly do a good job down with, you know, with the Area Auto Racing News. And, uh, you know, you've been on that team now for how long? Well, I've been with them 12 years uh, as a columnist. And then three years ago, they asked me to go full time with them, was, uh, which was like a dream come true. Here we go. Okay, we'll watch them up in turns three and four. Starter Bob Hockenberry is waving that green flag. Here they come off turn four. I'll tell you, Dutch Snyder uh, coming up with a problem right away here. He got really close to that fourth turn fence, Bob. I know from up here, it, uh, it's really hairy, I must say. They really do get around here at Port Royal. We're still under green. Uh, there comes the yellow now. The yellow now. Okay, so, uh, Smokey Snowmaker, we were down at the Williams Grove here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they were having their Twin 20 event down there, and I uh, was standing on the back stretch, you know, and... Uh, I was watching Smokey Snellbaker work that number 33 car, and he almost held off Keith Kaufman for a heat race win down there. So that team is, uh, I don't think that's a high-budget operation, is it, Bob? Well, I'll tell you, Mike Jablonski, I guess everybody knows that's whose car it is. Uh, the man was involved in a wreck here early in the year. Uh, Mike was a modified driver. He always had the best equipment. Uh, and I know right now he has good equipment in that sprint car, just as he's always had bad luck. Uh, just seemed like every Mike went racing, uh, trouble always made it, made it look like the team didn't have no money. But they do have money, and they really try hard. And Mike said the biggest, uh, the biggest advantage he's ever had was putting Smokey in the car to get it worked out. Maybe he gets back in it, it'll really run. Yeah, you know, a lot of race fans, you know, Smokey Snowbaker is really kind of a, you know, uh, what can I say, a, a hero among a lot of the fans sure here yeah. over the years. And, uh, you know, we would we would really like to see Smokey get hooked up. Some people say he can't win races anymore. I tend to disagree with that, Bob. Yeah, you got to. The man really is trying hard. Uh, everybody knows everybody gets older. Well, Smokey has gotten older, but he just hasn't been in a real top-notch equipment. But uh, he does real good. We could have a serious situation yeah, here. Yeah, Alan Root right. coming out of the pit area. He doesn't make it out, Bob. Under green, a tough oh. break for Alan Ruth, but yeah. you know that is a very serious situation. I'm glad the boy had enough sense to know that uh, he better not go out there. I'm glad he, uh, at least he showed uh, that he knows what he's doing there. Exactly. Yeah, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't continue on out onto the speedway. He did stop the race car, but it kind of gets, a, you know, the fans excited yeah. when they see something. <laughs> That's for sure. He's seen the situation there. He knew what was happening. It gets this commentator excited. I'll guarantee <laughs> you. Especially from up here. This is something. But getting back to Smokey, uh, Smokey is really trying hard to get himself a good team together, and uh, right now he's kind of quiet about it. You can't blame him. If he gets a good team together, he wants to do it right. So we're, the press is leaving him alone. He said it, when, it, when word comes out on something, he'll let us know. Yeah, right, exactly. But we just didn't want uh, our viewers to think that, you know, Smokey Snellbaker was going to ride off into the sunset somewhere <laughs> and never return. Nah, he doesn't want to give up. He loves racing too much. That's for sure. Well, here they come off turn four, and he's leading this consolation event. We'll watch them as they head down the first turn. Everybody working their way single foul through that first and second turn. Smokey Snellbaker seems to have the handle on things here, Bob. Yes, he does. Uh, 
We got Rich Eichelberger uh, battling uh, Gary Hauser for second. And we got a car almost spinning up in turns three and four. But he gets it straightened out. That's the number one of Steve Moore. And Steve, a local driver, Bobby, just started racing. I think this may be his fifth time in a sprint car. <laughs> now he's trying. I can see that right now. He, jumped, he definitely jumped right in with the Lions here tonight. Woo! Here they come off turn four. This what is a, your battle for, second. A battle for second. A good battle for second. Correct. We see Dave Wickham there in the number 35. He was a victim of an accident here on Labor yeah, Day. on Labor Day, right. They, they worked all week to get it here tonight. They he, told me. They said they worked hard. Yeah, the, uh, all these teams definitely. It takes a lot of work to oh. run on spring car. There goes your leader, Smokey Snellbaker, and he... Smokey is really... Uh, He's really put a lot of real estate between him and your second place man. Yeah, and I'm sure he's smiling about it too. And I'm betting you that car owner's smiling. Yeah, they got to be real happy. They're going to make this feature event borrowing no problems here, Bob. Here comes your second place man. It's the 5A from Jeremy Hauser, followed by Dave Wickham and the number eight of Rich Eichelberger. So Rich is, uh, you know, he's kind of trying to find his way around this oh, football yeah. speedway. He doesn't run here regularly. We run to Silver Springs and Super Sportsman, but uh, he knows his way around. You can see it here in the concert. There goes your leader, Smokey Snellbaker, in that previously driven Mike Jablonski, number 33. Well, we're just about down near the end of this event, Bob. We only got two laps to go. Uh, starter Bob Hockenberry signaling the field. And we've got a battle developing here for second spot. We're presently watching Smokey Snellbaker take the white flag. And we'll try and pick it up for you. Here they come down the first turn. Now it's a little hard to communicate with our camera lady here, Bob. The noise is quite high. Here comes your leader and probably your winner, Smokey Snellbaker in the number 33. We got a big battle for second here. Here they come off turn four. It's going to be Dave Wickham in the number 35. Right there, you can see him on your screen. Followed by the 5H of Gary Hauser, the number 8 of Rich Eichelberger, and the number 90 of Alan Ruth. Well, Bob, uh, that'll round out this uh, star studded field here for the Tuscarora 50 uh, Super Sprint Car feature, which will be coming up. And, uh, you know, they work pretty good on this track. You know, they don't get a chance to work on this racetrack fair week because they have the harness horse races here. But I would say this track is, is ranks very high among the tracks that we've seen here this year. I must say tonight is just super. I walked down around the turn earlier with Doug Wolfgang, and uh, Wolfgang walked out and came back in and said, hey, I don't need to check this track. This track is great tonight. It's real smooth, and the drivers know when it's that smooth, they can really, really go in hard. That's right, and, you know, you don't get near as many the drivers can put on a much better show on a smooth racetrack, that's for sure. And uh, a question I had for you, Bob, uh, is it true that uh, Doug Wolfgang may be moving back into the, or moving into this area and well, put up permanent you know, residence? Well, there's some speculation of that. I, I have talked to Doug about it. Uh, I could say right now without him stating, I always like to have him state things like that. Exactly. Because it's, it's, a, it's a critical move if he does that. But I do know that he's thinking about putting his house up for sale, moving into the area, and possibly getting a business together of some sort. Again, this is only talk. Again, he's like Smokey. He says when things happen, he'll let the press know about it. Right. Purely speculation on our part here. I, I was just kind of wondering what, uh, what was developing. Uh, you know, hey, that would be great if Doug Wolfgang would move back into this area <laughs> or move in this area. Well, he, he, he's, he's in love with his hometown of Sioux Falls, of course. I guess everybody would be. He loves coming back here. At first, he was skeptical. Now he loves it back here. The people have got a liking to him. Uh, right now, his, his family, uh, his children's back home. Uh, they're back in school. He's going to miss them now. He's not going to get to see them here for a while. That's why he wasn't here last Wednesday. He decided to take the week off, spend it with his wife and children before he comes back here. And then uh, when he gets to see him next time, it'll be probably in a month or two. But uh, uh, he definitely misses them, that's for sure. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, it takes a lot of dedication to be a professional sprint car driver. A lot of people think it's a picnic out there. <laughs> you know, they think it's a joy ride. But, you know, you've just put so many hours into preparing a sprint car if you're on the mechanical end of things. Uh, a car owner, yeah, the money's pretty much all one direction going out. And, uh, you know, the driver, 
yeah, he gets, you know, he gets a pretty decent cut out of the winnings, but, but then, you know, if he's a professional race driver, he may not see his family for, you know, months at a time. That's for sure. Even the ones that live in this area, you know, when they go racing like they've been lately, they've been running just about every night this summer, you know, while we're home watching TV maybe or whatever, they're home working the race cars, and, it's, it, and, the, and the wives and the children really got to say, hey, Pop, go ahead and do it. Uh, we're behind you all the way, and that's a lot of cases here with sprint car drivers, which makes sense for PA as great as it is. Yeah, we are very fortunate. I think sometimes Central, Central Pennsylvania race fans are a bit spoiled, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. I've been all over the country myself. Uh, it's good racing when you travel across the country with the outlaw events when you get all the top names there. But when it comes down to a regular show, my God, Central PA has a beat all the way. <laughs> kind of the mecca <laughs> of sprint car racing, you know. Well, you know, uh, Bob, we want to thank you for joining us up here in the booth. Uh, we know you're going to be taking some notes, preparing an article yeah. <laughs> for on this race. And, uh, you know, we want to thank you for coming up and talking with us tonight. It's been strictly our pleasure, believe me. No problem at all. You know, I've known you for a few years, and uh, I watched your videos over in the exhibit hall tonight, and I must say they're terrific videos. And uh, I was really surprised on the uh, nighttime vision of the videos. They're really great. I'm not just saying that because I'm with you. I've seen many, and uh, that is really something else. Well, thank you very much for the compliment, and I can return that by saying that if you don't subscribe to Area Auto racing news i'll tell you really don't know what's going on because you people do such a great job covering the whole spectrum of the sport and you know we're just happy to have you up here with us tonight well, again you know we thank you no Bob. problem at all and i appreciate you inviting me up here and uh i just wish that everybody has a real nice winter here and it's always sad to see the last race support well like this but it's going to be a super race okay thanks again bob Okay, as we watch uh, some of the track maintenance people here, the push trucks, the wreckers, uh, they're trying to run that top part of the speedway in, and uh, we're really uh, pleased to have Bob Corpenning uh, stop in on us, and uh, now we have Bruce Ellis up here in the booth with us. So uh, welcome, welcome uh, to the team here, Bruce. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Uh, what do you think of tonight's feel? We ask, uh, you know, we had asked Bob, and he said, uh, "Hey, you got a lot of good race cars here tonight. What do you think?" Oh, there's no doubt about that. Of course, Wolfgang is definitely the number one sprint car driver in America right now. Kaufman's always tough to beat at Port Royal. You've got a good invader in Kenny Jacobs here tonight. Richard Lupo is here. It's just a very fine field overall. Anybody's race. There we see the 69 of Donnie Kreitz uh, on the center of our screen, their trailer. And uh, right now, I bet there's a lot of uh, contemplating going on in this pit area, you know, between crew member and race car driver. Definitely, and especially we've seen some of the trucks out there knocking the cushion off. And I'm sure the drivers are going to, and the crews, of course, are going to have to make some decisions concerning tires for tonight's race. And it's a long race. I imagine we'll have a fuel stop halfway through. So uh, the brains are definitely working in high gear in the pit area right now. Well, you, you can't win races all with horsepower anymore. you got to have some uh, intelligence involved. It's almost become a high-tech thing, you know. And, you know, it's a shame in a way. Uh, here at Port Royal Speedway, we're, we're not really accustomed to seeing professional race drivers. But, you know, the trend has been lately that if you want to run up front, you almost have to go professional nowadays. I think that's correct, and a good example of that has been Maynard Yingst, uh, who actually quit his job last year and became a full-time racer, and it certainly has helped him. Yeah, it shows, uh, you know, Keith Kaufman, another professional race car driver, and uh, Jimmy Nay, so Jimmy stopped in and talked with me the other day at the house, and he said, you know, he doesn't feel too bad. Now, he, he finished second to Doug Wolfgang here on Labor Day, but he led most better than half the event. Doug finally did reel him in and pass him, but you know, he didn't he didn't feel badly about that because he said, hey, I got beat by the best in the country. That's right. And I had the opportunity to ride from Port Royal to Sealands Grove with Doug Wolfgang on Monday evening, and it was for a, an interview that we're doing for Open Wheel Magazine, and Wolfgang mentioned at that time he dropped back a little bit during the race because he could see Jimmy Nace's tire smoking, and he just waited until the tires went all the way, and then he came and passed him. And he, he said he was getting a little bit worried because he was afraid he was going to be wrong and those tires just might make it the whole race, but uh, he yeah. thought that's why he was able to get him. At one point, Jimmy actually had just about a full straightaway lead, and uh, Jimmy said that he was trying to conserve his tires. He really didn't know exactly where Doug Wolfgang was. He thought he was a little closer, you know. And when you're leading a race like that, you sure, you got your pit crew members out there along the hub rail, and they're giving you signals, but still, it's kind of tough to totally rely on those signals. That's for sure. And it's of course, we have some experienced pit crew people giving those signals, but as you said, sometimes it is really tough to rely on that. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Bruce, we want to thank you for stopping by and talking with us here. Uh, and, uh, you know, first of all, I want to congratulate you on a great article on the uh, Eastern Swing. 
the northeastern swing of the outlaws that article that you done in open wheel magazine that was great uh and, and you know are you a little bit partial to this to the uh, central pennsylvania eastern sprint car resident racers well i guess it's always nice when the home team wins and I, <laughs> I, i'd really like to thank you for the compliment yeah i i wouldn't want to put you on the spot uh, there's a lot of great race car drivers in the in the uh, united states today and uh, you know we're just happy i feel we're fortunate here in central pennsylvania to have the quality of sprint car racing that we have each and every week i think if you talk to any of the invaders that come in here they'll tell you this is absolutely the toughest place in the country to come into and win and we've really got so many good cars in this area on a weekly basis and it's definitely got to be the toughest weekly racing in america well uh... yeah bruce we read your articles all the time in open wheel uh, in fact you cover this area for open wheel magazine that's a tall assignment and uh, anybody that, that uh, really doesn't follow open wheel uh... the magazine really you know you're kind of at a loss because uh, this gentleman does such a great job, Bruce Ellis. Thank you for coming up, Bruce. Thank you for talking with us. Thank you for having me. You bet. Okay, Randy, uh, we're back. We're looking at some of the fans that are sitting here in front of us on the bleachers. And uh, let's ask them who's going to win tonight, Randy. They're hollering beef, Randy, so I guess that means Doug Wolfgang, uh, you know, the Mr. Beef car, the number 29, and uh, yeah, he's a pretty good pick if you're going to pick somebody, I guess. Uh, he's, he's definitely my pick. Well, uh, we have the starting lineup laying here in front of us, so we'll go down over that for you while they're getting those cars lined up down there in front of the grandstand, and uh, making up the first row of this Tuscarora 50 will be the number 33, uh, Van May, and alongside him will be the number 98 of Alan Klinger. Row number two in this final feature event for the Sprint Cars, the Tuscarora 50, will be on the inside, the Camel Express, car number 26, Jim Nace, and alongside him in the Keen Transport 5W from Mechanicsburg, Randy Wolf. Starting in that third row, inside in the fifth starting position will be the number K54 of Frankie Kerr, the Lawrence Service Center car, and matched up beside him will be the number 880, the Roy Morrow Hardy's car, the driver, Scott Tobias. Row number four on the inside in that seventh starting position, driving the Tobias Speed Shop C. Irwin Sons 7L, will be Lebanon's Paul Lotier, and alongside him, the winningest sprint car driver in the country today, driving the Weikert's Livestock number 29 from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Doug Wolfgang. And in the fifth row, in the number 77, the Al Hamilton contracting special in that ninth starting spot will be our 1985 track champion here at the Port Royal Speedway, Keith Kaufman. And matched up alongside him in the number 69N will be Donnie Kreitz starting in that 10th spot, Randy. Row number six on the inside in that 11th starting position, driving the Libby Mobile Homes number 88 from Langlestown is Maynard Yanks. And alongside Maynard in that 12th starting position, currently third in the Paps Point standings, 19-year-old Stevie Smith Jr. in that Creasy, sign, Creasy Signs number 19. In the seventh row, Randy, starting in that 13th starting position, it'll be the number 28G out of Harrisburg, Joey Gravino. And alongside him in that 14th starting spot, one of the EG Classic cars, the number 17C, will be Chris Esch. Row number eight on the inside in that 15th starting position out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Car number 21S is Jerry Stone. And alongside him in car number two is Steve Siegel. Making up that ninth row, starting in that 17th starting spot. In the 4J will be Kenny Jacobs. And alongside him in the number four will be Gorenson. Gorenson? Yeah, Gorenson is exactly right. John. Okay, Gorenson in the number four, starting in that 18th spot, Randy. Row number 10 on the inside in that 19th starting position in car number 33. He's logged an awful lot of miles here at the Port Royal Speedway. It's Smokey Snellbaker, and alongside him in car number 35, formerly from Brewerton, New York, now living in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, is Dave Wickham. Making up the 11th row, starting in that 21st starting spot, in the 5H will be Gary Hauser, at one time drove the Hardys 880 for Roy Morrill, and alongside him in the number 8 will be Rich Eichelberger. Final row, the 12th row, on the inside in that 23rd starting position, in car number 90 is Alan Ruth, 
And alongside him in car number 40 from McVeigh Town is Kenny Smith. John, what a field of sprint cars here tonight at Port Royal Speedway. Boy, I'll tell you, it just looks like a who's who in sprint car racing in central Pennsylvania, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, it was really nice having uh, Bob Core Penning and Bruce Ellis stop by to talk to us here in the booth. And we want to thank you for giving up your microphone and your headset to let those two guys visit us here. John, I'll do that any time. You know, those guys have done so much on the literary end for sprint car racing in Pennsylvania. I don't mind stepping aside one bit. Well, we're, uh, we're glad to have you back here to call this exciting 50 lap sprint car feature here, the Tuscarora 50. This will be the 18th running, and uh, we'll see, you know, if Keith Kaufman can kind of defend his honor here on his home turf in that Al Hamilton number 77, or can the invading Doug Wolfgang. He's run about six, seven races here at Port Royal Speedway this season. He knows his way around the track. He's fresh with a victory on Labor Day. So, you know, we'll see what happens between the perennial powers here. Okay, John, and one thing we want to mention is tonight we have an honorary starter here, and that being the living legend from Lingelstown, probably, in my opinion, the greatest sprint car driver to ever sit behind the wheel, and that being the Lingelstown lead foot, Mitch Smith. Yeah, Mitch Smith. The, you know, I'll tell you, he's an institution, Randy, almost. Uh, the man... You know, back in uh, the 60s and 70s when Mitch Smith was really in his prime, you know, the sprint car features weren't paying four and five and six and thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, you know. I would hate to think of how much money Mitch Smith might have in his bank account today if the purses would be, you know, like they are today, Randy. That's absolutely true, John, and he was one of the greatest drivers to ever, as I said, sit behind the wheel of a sprint car. He logged an awful lot of miles here at Port Royal Speedway. He certainly put a lot of thrills and chills in my spine. And it's glad to see Mitch Smith back here at Port Royal. That's for sure. Even And he'll be, like you said, Randy, dropping the green flag on this uh, star-studded field for this very traditional 50-lap Tuscarora 50 race here at the Port Royal Speedway. Well, we'll be right back with the waving of the green flag, Randy, right after this. Okay, Randy, here they come, the finest that the Port Royal Speedway can conjure up here tonight. And they are the finest, Randy, the finest sprint car drivers in central Pennsylvania. John, look at these fans. They're waving the cars on. This is traditional four-abreast style for some of the bigger races you'll see across the United States today. What a field we have here for our viewers and... You know, a lot of pressure on the number oh, uh, 33 yeah. of Van May. He'll be setting on the point of this star-studded field. And then you got young Alan Klinger on the outside pole in the number 98. He's been running really super good. They just put that race car together here recently. His grandfather, actually the owner on the car, the Lucas Mining number 98. The second row, you got Jimmy Nace in the Camel Express number 26. He was the man that put the pressure on Doug Wolfgang here. Almost held him off for a big feature win. Right alongside him, Randy Wolf, who is way overdue for a big feature win here at Port Royal Speedway. It could be tonight, Randy. Then we look on back the field. We got Frankie Kerr. You know, Frankie, one of the top drivers on the circuit. Right beside him, Scott Tobias in the number 880. You go back one more row, you got Paul Latier in the number seven, matched up alongside him, Doug Wolfgang. You don't need to, he needs no introduction. Then you go back another row, you got Keith Kaufman, the track champion here in 1985, six time track champion. You know, here at the Port Royal Speedway, he'd have to be an odds on favor. And we got a problem right off the bat, Randy, up in turns three. It didn't look like Alan Klinger was able to get on the throttle. is waving even after that bad start they may bring the yellow back out here randy we'll see yeah there it comes and randy wolf down yep. in turn two we're under yellow we are under yellow randy that's you know that's a really tough break for randy wolf let's hope there's nothing wrong with that race car that's really a shock for alan Klinger. you know i thought for a moment he might have been sleeping on the start but actually he did experience a problem in that Lucas Mining 98, and that's about the worst place in the world, the oh, start man. of a race to have a problem. Setting on the outside pole, you better believe it, Randy. I don't think he couldn't get he couldn't get the car going. That was the problem. And uh, you know, the rest of the field, they're ready to go. You know, they jumped on the throttle, and we were and we're lucky we didn't have a serious incident there. Well, I hope we don't lose Randy Wolf out of there. Now we see Frankie Kerr pulling in the pits. We got a car setting down here. Dave Wickham in the number 35 has stopped on the inside of the front stretch. So we've just lost up to four cars in that little incident. Randy Wolf's up on turn two. He's got a push truck behind him. Camera swings around. Over there, you'll see that 
ordeal that's going on there. Let's hope there's no problem with Randy. And uh, we'll check the pit area. Here's Randy, or uh, Frankie Kerr in the number 54, Randy. We'll get the camera to move around. Setting right there in your screen. The pit crew seems to be looking over the car, John, to see if there's any major damage. I'm sure it's very preliminary. It's an early race. It's going to be an official restart. Will he lose his original starting position? He though, certainly Randy? will. He did pit under the yellow. Yes. Okay, we'll be back with hopefully an official good waving green flag here from our starter Bob Hockenberry. Okay Randy, uh, the cars re-lined up over there on that back stretch. Van May, your pole setter, and he has a new man flanking him now, Jimmy Nays. They pick up the pace. Starter Bob Hockenberry has dropped the green flag. Randy, we are underway off turn four. And Jimmy Nays takes the lead over Van May. And that's a bit of a surprise to me, John. Jimmy Nace looks really fast as they head off turn number two. Somebody's, somebody's race car bottomed out going into turn one. We saw a lot of sparks down there, Randy. Here they come off turn four. Jimmy Nace out of Thompson Town, Pennsylvania leads the star-studded field. Van May runs second, Paul appears third. And look at Pete Kaufman, John. He's already moved up to that fourth position, Scott Tobias Smith. Pete Kaufman is definitely on the move. He's right in behind Paul Latier as they head down the back stretch. You can see him there on your screen. We'll swing it around with Jimmy Nace, your leader. Off turn four. Here comes Coffin on the inside. Okay, John, Doug Wolfgang will be getting to get into the picture right there. And Paul Atier got very close to that backstretch fence, Randy, just as Doug Wolfgang went by. Here comes your leader off turn four, Jimmy Nace. Hey, Joel, we got a lot of laps to go, and I'm already detecting the track is beginning to dry out a little bit. There you see him on your backstretch, Pete Kaufman, and the number 880 of Scott Tobias as they come off turn number four. Jim Nace continues to lead. Can Jimmy Nace hold off the challenges of Keith Coffin and Doug Wolfgang here for Royal? And Jimmy Nace just turned in a 1958, Randy. Okay, John, that's a certain sign that the track is slowing down just a little bit. That's not a bad time under the green, though, Randy, with that many race cars. It actually. certainly is. There's a good shot of Doug Wolfgang as he's streaked by our camera. Doug Wolfgang is following the 69 of Donnie Grace now as they head up the back track. Okay, Doug Wolfgang is in that fifth position. Right there, he's going to start putting pressure on the 880. Yeah, right, the 880, Randy. Here they come off turn four. There goes the 33 of Van May. He runs third. Keith Kaufman has already moved up to second, Randy. Okay, Kaufman's going to begin to put the pressure on the number 26 of Jim Nace. John, it looks like a freight train out there. And Randy, just as Keith Kaufman reaches Jimmy Nace, they're going to they're going to be getting into lap traffic, Randy. Okay, it's very early, so these drivers are going to have to be careful as they head through the lap traffic. Remember, this race will be stopped at halfway for a fuel stop. That's right, Randy. We're with our leaders on the back stretch, Jimmy Nace and Keith Kaufman. And here comes Dan May in the number 33. They're all going to get bunched together now in this top traffic, Randy. Okay, Doug Wolfgang is moved into that fourth position now behind the number 33 of Van May. And look, all of a sudden, Keith Kaufman has lost a little bit of ground, John. Van May has moved up on the inside of Keith Kaufman, and Kaufman is going backwards, Randy. He definitely has to go with the problem. Hopefully he can gather it back up and keep going in this race, John. And some of the Doug Wolfgang fans, Randy, are going crazy out of here. John, this is really strange to see Keith Kaufman come up with a mechanical problem on the racetrack. We hate to see it, Randy, that's for sure. Now it's going to be up to Van May and Doug Wolfgang. Jimmy Nace, though, a, a blessing for Nace as he works his way off turn four. And Keith Kaufman has come to a stop over on the back stretch. Okay, John, that'll bring out the yellow flag. Right now your leader is the number 26 of Jimmy Nace. And right about there you'll see the number 77 of Keith right Kaufman there. right there on your screen. And he has stopped that... He has stopped that race car over there, Randy, on the speedway. What could be the problem with the 77? Unbelievable. You know, on almost any other race, you can rely on that car to always finish. But something has definitely happened to that car. 
hopefully it's something they can rectify and get them back out on the tail of this feature event. Let's hope so, Randy. Uh, you know, the crew on the number 77, a very young crew, and they've done a magnificent job keeping that car, you know, finishing races all during the season here. Let's hope it's minor. Let's hope they can get that 77 back in the race. We'll get right back with the resumption of this Tuscarora 50 right after this, Randy. Okay, Randy, uh, Keith Kaufman sitting in the pits. It looks like they're trying to get the tire changed on the number 77. The yellow lights are out. They're going to go green flag racing here, Randy. And no, we're not going to get a green this time, John. No uh, green. The green flag is not waving. The green lights are on. Let's hope there's no incidents here, Randy. Okay, John, I'm keeping my eye on the Keith Kaufman pit. They're working feverishly on that right rear tire. It's going to take them at least one more lap. Let's try and get a picture of that action there for you. They've got the right, they got the new tire on the car now. They're drawing up, they're drawing it up. No, they don't. They've still got the old tire on there, Randy. Okay, they're pushing Keith out. They may have changed it, John. They may have changed it that tire. It could have been. It could have been. Now, could this be some kind of race strategy, Randy? Could it have been that Kaufman felt the car wasn't right? You know, so he stops on the racetrack, brings out the yellow, goes to the pits, changes the tire, because if you're going to do something like that, Randy, you're going to have to do it early. Certainly true, John. I mean, yeah. this will give him a chance to work his way back up through the field, but I can't hardly believe that they would risk it that much. And, you know, it's not a NASCAR race, Randy. That's right. Okay, John, they're going to have to go another lap. Keith Kaufman is not on the rear of the field, so we'll just stay in here and see what happens on this next time around. I don't think they have the problem solved, John, really. That's true. It could have been a brake problem, Randy. Who knows? Well, Jimmy Nace has been leading what we've run of this 50-lap Tuscarora uh, 50 here at Port Royal Speedway. And Doug Wolfgang has moved his number 29 car up into that third spot. He runs behind Van May, and Van May seems to be hooked up here pretty well. Okay, now, John, they're heading down the back stretch. It looks like we may get a green this time. Yellow lights are out. We're watching Jimmy Nace. The whole field really creeping there, Randy. Jimmy Nace begins to pick up the pace. Here they come off turn four. We're back under green, Randy. And we have a spin out up in turn three and four. So that'll bring out the yellow flag once again. I believe it's the car number four of Gorenson who has spun out in turns three and four, John. I believe that's the, yeah, the black, the black number four car. Right in the center of the turn. Okay, that's right going to, there. That's going to send them around here a couple of more laps until uh, they get the field regrouped. And uh, we'll be back with uh, the, the resumption of this Tuscarora 50 here at the Port Royal Speedway right after this. Okay, Randy, we're back. Jimmy Nace leads what we've run of this 50 lap feature event. And as you mentioned, they'll be going the first 25 laps, then they'll bring out the red, they'll have the fuel stop, and they'll come back for the second 25. John, what a strange start there. Van May lagged back a good five car length. Yeah, and Doug Wolfgang pulled up alongside of him. That was a hairy move by Donnie Grace as they work their way down the front stretch. We'll pick them up over on turn two. Jimmy Nace, your leader in that Camel Express number 26. Here now we have a, there we have a battle now for second position. Doug Wolfgang down on the inside of Van May, John. Here they come off turn four, Van May. Still hangs on to that second spot, Randy. Okay, Wolfgang again tries the inside, but to no avail. Here they come off turn number two, Van May tries desperately to hold off the number 29 of Wolfgang. He knows, he knows he can't give up that position because Doug Wolfgang is so hard to pass, Randy. He certainly is. Here they come by our Strasser Motorsports video cameras. Down in the turns one and two, Doug Wolfgang works the inside, Van May along the outside. And Jimmy Nace has got to be enjoying every minute of this, Randy, because he doesn't have anybody pressuring him right now. One thing's for sure, John, I would say that Doug Wolfgang is not running 100% right now. He's conserving the car, I know it. Well, yeah, Randy, he's driving a conservative race. Here they come off that second turn. Van May gets out of shape just a little bit. Doug Wolfgang goes sailing by. Wolfgang will now try and reel in Jimmy Nace in the number 26 as they work away. Off turn four. Okay, John, I've been keeping my eye on Keith Kaufman, and the car seems to be going quite well. And there goes Doug Wolfgang into the lead. He has just passed Jimmy Nace. Jimmy Nace tries to hang on to Doug Wolfgang as they come off turn four. Here comes your new leader, Doug Wolfgang. 
Okay, Jimmy Nace continues to run second, Van May third. We have Scott Tobias fourth, Donny Kreitz fifth, Maynard Giggs runs sixth, and a host of other drivers. So John, Doug Wolfgang in the lead. Yes, he is, Randy. A lot of Doug Wolfgang fans standing down here, cheering, waving him on. Jimmy Nace, the local favorite, runs in that second spot. Okay, Donny Kreitz has moved into fourth now, John. He's been running the low line on the racetrack. Let's see if that helps him. And Doug Wolfgang has begun to pull away from Jimmy Nace. He is enjoying about a 10-12 car lead, Randy. John, this kind of surprises me a little bit because Doug Wolfgang generally doesn't take the lead in a race like this. But he's out there now, and I'm sure he's conserving the car, but he's going very fast at that. That's for sure, Randy. We'll watch him. Jimmy Nace as he works his way down the back stretch and into turn number three. Here comes your leader off turn four, Doug Wolfgang. He's still got some clear track in front of him, Randy. Well, one thing that Doug Wolfgang knows is we're going to get a red flag on the 25th lap. So he'll be able to put a fresh set of tires on that car. Well, one thing's for sure, Randy. He doesn't have to save his tires as much, being that we have that halfway stop. That's absolutely true. That could be why he's really standing on the gas here. Well, you see Jimmy Nace. And we have a spin out right there, right on, your there on your screen. The number 90 of Alan Ruth pointed the wrong direction over there off turn two. And that's going to give uh, Jimmy Nace an opportunity here to see if he can hang with the, the 29 of uh, Doug Wolfgang. I don't know if it's possible, Randy. This man's been beating everybody. Steve Kinzer, Sammy Swindell, Bobby Davis. He's got the whole sprint car world just turned inside out. Okay, John, and Keith Kaufman just now pulls into the pit area. He was running about the 11th or 12th position. We'll take a look over here with the camera, see what's going on. They're still working on that right rear tire, Randy. I don't think they got that tire changed when they were in before. No, they didn't, and I believe they're going to change it this time if they can, but there's not going to be a, a great deal of time. I noticed the push truck has not yet gotten behind the number 90, so Keith could have a couple laps. What could be the problem there? They seem to be having an awful lot of difficulty getting that right rear tire off that race car. Yeah, that's surprising that there would be something fail in that location on the race car. Okay, it looks like they may be cleaning some mud out of the out of the inner wheel. That could be, John. A lot of times a driver will pick up that vibration, think something major is going wrong with the car, so now Keith will bring it right back out. Well, Keith Kaufman cannot continue to restart on the rear of this field all night. I mean, now he is going to have to stay in this race. I would say Keith Kaufman has to at least move up to 7th or 8th position. At the halfway at mark. At the halfway mark. have any to, chance at yeah, all. That's exactly right. Well, we, you know, Keith Kaufman, the local favorite here, he is the track champion. You know, and if anybody could do it, it would have to be Kaufman, you would, you would assume. Exactly right. Okay, we're going to be right back with the resumption of the Tuscarora 50 here at the Port Royal Speedway right after this. Okay, we're back, Randy. Uh, Doug Wolfgang establishing the lead about eight laps ago. And he has a lap car directly behind him in the form of uh, Gary Hauser in the 5H. Jimmy Nace runs second. Here they come off turn four, Randy. And he's stressing that lead already, Johnny. He has a good, probably, 8 to 10 car length lead on the number 26. We're watching our second place battle here. Well, actually, it's not a battle. Jimmy Nace is running comfortably in that second spot. Van May runs third. Donnie Kreitz runs fourth. And it's Maynard Jinkst in the number 88. John, I've been keeping an eye on the number seven of Paul Latier. He's moving up through the field right now. He's running in, uh, I believe, the sixth position. And we have another yellow. Again, Alan Ruth coming to a stop on the speedway right here, uh, just past the pit entrance for the sprint cars here off turn four. And uh, Alan Ruth having his problems. Uh, evidently, some gremlins must have crawled in that race car with him tonight. Uh, he's, this is the second time now that he's stopped. He's spun in turn two. Now he comes to a stop. And you can see a little bit of steam coming out from underneath the front of that race car. He could have some heating up problems here, Randy. It could be difficult for Alan to uh, maintain the level of competition he needs to complete 50 laps in this Tuscarora 50. Well, him along with a host of others, I'm sure, Randy, it's kind of an endurance race. You know, you can't go out there. You can't try and win it on the first lap. You know, that's for sure. We'll be uh, staying with you here because the cars, the yellow lights, all right, we should be getting a green this time as the cars approach that third turn, Randy. Okay, right now we see Paul Latier. He's on the inside. He is running in that sixth position, John. And, and Paul Latier gets an extremely good shot there on Maynard Yanks as they work their way off turn four. Now he's being held up by lap traffic, Randy. Okay, Doug Wolfgang, your leader. There's the battle for 
second position. Jim Nace holds that second position quite well. Van May runs third, but he's getting a serious challenge from the 69N of Donnie Kreitz. Okay, uh, Keith Coffin runs about 14th on the speedway, Randy. He's been coming, trying to come back from the rear. There goes Donnie Kreitz in that side-by-side -side battle with Van May as they head through turns one and two. John Donnie Kreitz is doing better tonight than he's ever done at the Port Royal Speedway. Boy, he moves into that third position. He's definitely hooked up in that car, that Jebco car, Randy. Here they come off turn four. Doug Wolfgang, there he goes. He's your leader in the Waker Livestock number 29. He's got just a tremendous lead already, John. He's got a full turn on Jimmy Davis. He's just flying high here in this customer of 50. I tell you what, everything has really been going great for Doug Wolfgang. He knows that. Bob Corpanning talked to him. He told Bob, we know that we're doing great right now, so we're just going to enjoy it while it lasts. That's certainly true. And you know, he's coming to love the Pennsylvania area now. And all the fans really like Doug Wolfgang. That's for sure. Well, here comes your leader, Doug Wolfgang, off that fourth turn to lead yet another lap in this 50 lap event. And okay. here comes Jimmy Nace off turn four. He still runs second, but the number 69 of Donnie Grace is beginning to move in now. And now he's down on the inside of Jimmy Nace. John, I think it's only a matter of time till Donnie Grace gets around Nace. Good be, Randy. We'll watch him as they work their way through turns three and four. Doug Wolfgang way out in front. Here comes your real battle on the speedway between Donnie Kreitz and the number 26 of Jimmy Nace. There is Doug Wolfgang off turn four. He's still your leader. He has about a full radius of this speedway. Okay, John, that's the checkered flag on this first 25 laps. Oh, man, the first 25 laps really jumped up on us here, Randy. Okay, running second is Jim Nace, third to 69 in of Donnie Price. Fourth, we have the 33 of Van May. Then it's Maynard Jinks, Paul Latier, Scott Tobias, and you know, Keith Kaufman is still pretty far back in this field, John. Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be tough for Keith Kaufman to try and come up with anything here. It's almost going to take a miracle, I, you know, it's, it's a, a real shame. shame. It's a shame that Kaufman had to have these problems here in this, the biggest race of the year here at Port Royal Speedway. Doug Wolfgang takes the extra cool down lap, you know, but this will give the drivers a chance, you know, to, to talk to the crew chiefs and maybe make some adjustments. Hey, you know, you can come back here in the second half of this thing. The whole complexion of this race could be changed, Randy. Okay, and I just checked with my dad, uh, Bill Satchler, who's taking a lot of the times here. He got Doug Wolfgang consistently in the 1940s, and that's super fast for this dry race track. I guess just goes to prove you don't have to be running on the track record to win races here at Port Royal Speedway under competition, Randy. Well, we're looking down in the pits. There's your second place man right there, Jimmy Nace. They're going with another right rear tire, Randy. And uh, I would say a wise decision on their part. You know, and if you're leading the race, you know, what do you do when you come into pits, Randy? Do, do you change things around? Uh, you know, it's got to make you wonder, you know? Well, knowing Doug Wolfgang, he knows exactly what to change on that racetrack. That's one thing that a lot of the competitors fear is a stop because that's, that's all the advan all the more of an advantage that Doug Wolfgang and Keith Kaufman, guys who've been running years and years and years, they know exactly what to do to that race car. Right. A lot of the, the uh, less experienced drivers will be stumbling, gee, what do you want to do? Do you want to throw some right rear into it? Do you want to tighten the car up a little bit? The track's starting to dry out. Doug Wolfgang knows just what to do. Well, that's great when you have a driver like Doug Wolfgang, you know, that can, can really, uh, you know, communicate with the crew chief. You know, that's really what the key is here, Randy, communication between the driver and the people that turn the wrenches. And I think sometimes, you know, the mechanics out here in this world of sprint car racing don't get the credit that they truly deserve. Exactly right, John. Okay, we'll be back with the second half of this Tuscarora 50 yeah, right after the uh, Lake Chevrolet pace car, beautiful uh, 1985 Camaro Z28 leading this star-studded field around this Port Royal Speedway as we are about to get underway with the second leg of this 50-lap uh, Tuscarora 50 race here at the Port Royal Speedway. And Doug Wolfgang seems to be running on 220 while everybody else is on 110, Randy. Well, that's certainly true, John. He's definitely hooked to the racetrack. Everything's just going his way in this race as it has all year long. Of course, uh, this will reshuffle the deck just a little bit. I mean, it will give uh, Jimmy Nace, who runs second, uh, he's got a lap car or two in between them there. That doesn't help. 
but uh, it will give the other drivers a chance. You know, they may have made some adjustments. Who knows? Anything can happen in a sprint car race. Well, John, the way Paul Latier was coming up through the field, I look for him to make another challenge here in this second leg of this Tuscarora 50 event. And, of course, Keith Kaufman, he sits back there in distant territory from the leader, Doug Wolfgang. So Keith's going to have to have to make his move early. Okay, right now the way it stands, it's uh, Doug Wolfgang, your leader, followed by Jimmy Nace, who runs second. He is third, fourth on the speedway. He runs in the second position. Then it's Donnie Kreitz, Van May, Maynard Jinks, and the seven of Paul Latier, who you just mentioned. Right behind him, it's Scotty uh, Tobias in the number 880, followed by Kenny Jacobs, Stevie Smith Jr., and Steve Siegel, and then Keith Kaufman. Okay, here they come, off turn four, starter Bob Hockenberry waves that green flag, Doug Wolfgang picks up right where he left off, Randy. Okay, he has about a five to six car length lead on the number 26 of Jimmy Nace. So Nace gets got by those lap cars very quickly, John. And there goes Donnie Kreitz in the number 69N. He is broke through. He runs third on the speedway. Here they come off turn four. Doug Wolfgang goes by. Jimmy Nace, Donnie Kreitz, Maynard Yates. And we have a a terrible oh crash! A terrible crash! Oh my crash. God, a big a fire on the fire. front stretch! Red flag! Oh no! This is terrible, Randy! Absolutely terrible! Where is Bob Hockenbury? That race car hit John, the flag stand! That's the number 77 of Keith Kaufman, I believe, on fire on the outside of the racetrack there. Camera swings to the right just a little bit. That fire is still burning down there, Randy. You can see it on the screen. Just a catastrophic accident here right in front of us on the front stretch, Randy. Let's hope they can get some fire equipment down there. They do have the fire extinguisher down there now. That fire is still raging, burning. Randy, this is just terrible. It is horrible. John, I'll tell you what happened. Oh, look at that fire. John, I'll tell you what happened. The number 40 of Kenny Smith lost power coming down the front stretch. Van May had nowhere to go. He got into up him. over the left rear and was right up into the judges stand. John, I don't know if anybody's injured up there. I don't know. The safety crew trying to get through. Hopefully everybody will cooperate. Let's hope the drivers are out of those race cars, Randy. Oh, my God, John. This is a horrible sight. This is one of the worst things that you can have happen at a racetrack. We didn't want to see anything like this. We come to the racetrack to see a good, exciting race. This just... And John, you know, a big black cloud over this event right at this point, Randy. The worst thing is these cars were totally fueled up. That's right. They come back onto the speedway with the tanks topped off. Randy, we're just going to have to stand awful. by here and see what, what uh, transpires. Hopefully we can get some word from uh, our racetrack announcer, Tom Baker. Well, it looks like they've got the fire under control down there in that first turn. Hey, John, you know, one thing that this does point out is the judge's stand is a very dangerous place. It's a vulnerable, uh, very oh. vulnerable thing and in a racetrack. That's man. right where Bob Hockenberry was I, standing. I couldn't, I couldn't see what become of Bob Hockenberry. Let's hope that nothing off that race car struck anybody in that judge's stand, Randy. My goodness. I thought that race car was actually going to come up on the stage. So did I. And uh, I'll tell you, that's a bad situation down there. Let's hope everybody's all right. Well, we have about one or two laps complete in the second half of this Tuscarora 50 event. And Keith Kaufman, one of the cars involved down there. Uh, Kenny Smith, as you mentioned, the number 40 car uh, involved. And I didn't see who ran up over the back of the number 40 car. Did you get it? Yeah, the first car to hit the number 40 was the number 33 of Van May. He had absolutely nowhere to go. Was it, the Van, was it Van May's car that actually hit the judges' Yes, stand? it was. Okay. I, I wasn't, I mean, I was watching it, but I couldn't... Uh, you know, you just, your mind just can't apprehend all that's going on in an event like that. And that's at the fastest part of the racetrack, John. That's the absolute worst place to wreck an, a sprint car. Okay, we're... Okay, they're calling for police officers. They probably would have a security problem down there. A lot of onlookers, people that are worried. And uh, we hear some sirens going off. They're carrying pieces of the race car back here. John, you know, one good thing is the ambulance went right by the judge's stand. So hopefully no one in the judges' stand was injured. Right, right. What a horrible There's sight a, here. We see one driver up in the judges' stand uh, conversing up there with the officials. 
It looked like a good clean uh, start. It was a good clean start, Randy. The cars seemed to be, you know, running in their positions quite well. And then, like you said, Kenny Smith lost power here on the front stretch. It wasn't his fault. He had nothing more that he could do. Van May right behind him, probably 100, 120 miles per hour. Oh, and the reaction time is just nil, yes, Randy. Especially on this narrow front stretch, John. I uh, hear in the background the fire whistles are blowing in uh, Port Royal Speed or at, in the Port Royal Borough. So they're going to bring emergency vehicles in here, but the fire is out, luckily. Okay, Randy, we're going to break away here until we have something a little more concrete uh, on this terrible crash that we've seen here on the front stretch. We'll be back once we have a little bit more to report here. Well, there you can see Joey Gravino. He walks back to his pit area. Evidently, Joey not injured in that accident. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that's good to see Joey's not hurt. Well, I'll tell you, Randy. Uh, John, they're starting to put flares out in the uh, infield area so that the helicopter will have a good spot If we get the to camera land. to a wide angle, there you can see them burning brightly. And they got security people in that infield, Randy. They are preparing to land a light flight helicopter here at the Port Royal Speedway to rush somebody for uh, medical attention here. More than they can provide here at the Speedway. Well, we'll just have to set tight here and see what transpires. Randy, uh, we've seen three drivers now that we feel were involved in that accident walk back to their pits. So uh, that's, you know, we're going to have to just be thankful with what we have so far here. Yes. Let's hope for the best, Randy. We'll be back with more on this incident here at Port Royal Speedway right after this. Approaching the infield here at the Port Royal Speedway. Now, we have, uh, since we reported to you that it was Van May, there's a bit of controversy there. It could be Kenny Jacobs. So we're just going to have to wait and see. To, Possibly to, even Kenny Smith, too. Or oh. Kenny Smith. I'm sorry. I meant to say Kenny Smith. There it is, sitting on the ground. The ambulance is parked about 50 feet away to the left. The fans are very happy, John. They're applauding that the life flight is here finally. Okay, they will be shutting the prop down on that, or down to a slow speed, I would assume. The fans really cooperating here to pull this rescue off. Let's hope that it's not too late, Randy. Let's hope. There you can see the ambulance just setting off to the side, waiting. They've got the back doors open on the ambulance. The pole here is just a little bit in the way. There you can just see the back of the ambulance to the extreme left of your screen. The well, John, helicopter setting there waiting. Our prayers are certainly with any of the injured uh, drivers or track officials here. That's for sure, Randy. And I think everybody else here, too, is, uh, you know, praying right along with us that uh, the outcome won't be tragic here tonight. The life flight helicopter on its way, and uh, you were able to pick up a little bit of news down there. Uh, what, what exactly did you find out, Randy? Well, there were a couple eyewitness reports that said Van May actually took a couple steps with a little bit of help from the ambulance crew to the stretcher. One thing we did find out is that the roll cage did not break, however, it bent around Van May, and they had to cut the cage to get him out of the car. Man, that's bad. Well, he took a pretty hard shot in the head from what I understand, and uh, let's hope that uh, it's nothing, you know, that, that, that will uh, be anything permanent to Van, that's for sure. Okay, uh, well, that's, you know, we want to thank you for going down there and getting that information for us. The sprint car drivers have been... Uh, summoned uh they've been made aware that they're going to be under 10 minute hold here and then they're going to bring their cars back out and we will resume with this tuscarora 50 here at the port royal speedway okay randy uh it seemed like an eternity almost since we've seen these sprint cars out on this racetrack actually almost a two hour delay but uh you know we're not complaining it takes time to handle a situation properly and uh van may uh probably getting very close if he has not already arrived out at uh, Geisinger Medical Center. And John, we're getting a lot better reports now on Van May and we understand that he was conscious and the only problem, we're just a little bit concerned about possible internal injuries. He did do a little bit of walking when they took him to the stretcher. That sounds great. It does. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, really. Okay, uh, recollect our thoughts here a little bit as we look over on that third and fourth turn. Doug Wolfgang has led ever since taking the lead from Jimmy Nace back in the first segment of this 50-lap Tuscarora 50-lap race here at Port Royal Speedway. 
Right there's the man, Doug Wolfgang. There is uh, Donnie Kreitz. He's turned in a super job here so far tonight, Randy. Jimmy Nace lies in that second spot. He has the number 90 of Alan Ruth between him and the leader, Doug Wolfgang, as we watch him over on turn two. And, uh, of course, we mentioned uh, Donnie Kreitz. Then it's Maynard Yanks, Paul Latier, the 880 of Scott Tobias, and the four of Kenny Jacobs, the 19 of Stevie Smith, Jr. So, Randy, we are about three laps into this second leg of this 50-lap feature event. Here they come, Doug Wolfgang, your leader. Okay, Jimmy Nate has no problem getting around the number 90 of Alan Ruth and will set his sights on the 29 of Doug Wolfgang. However, Wolfgang is beginning to stretch it out once again, John. Yeah, Doug Wolfgang, the class of the field here so far tonight. We watch him work his way off turn four. Jimmy Nace runs second. Okay, John, Paul Latier now up into that fourth position, and we'll see if Paul Latier can do something with Donnie Kreitz. Okay, the car is beginning to stretch out now around this half mile speedway here at Port Royal. Here comes your leader, Doug Wolfgang. And right now he has probably a 15 car length lead over Jimmy Nate. Johnny Christ Jr. runs third, Paul Lapierre fourth, Maynard Yinks runs in that fifth position. Well, Doug Wolfgang can certainly run his kind of race now, Randy. He has a lot of uh, real estate between him and Jimmy Nace. And Jimmy Nace not having any problem. He's got a pretty good lead over Bonnie Christ. I would say that Jimmy Nace, the only thing he can hope for is some kind of a mechanical problem occurring on the number 29 that would sideline Wolfgang. Otherwise it's, all, otherwise, it's all Wolfgang right now. Very close to the wall there, John. Yes, he was, Randy. He's probably looking, looking for traction. Yes. He has a good half a straightaway lead now, John. Here he comes off. Turn number four, the there big he, lead signed by one of his pit crew members. I was going to say, there you can see him giving the big lead sign. Right here is about the closest battle on the speedway, Maynard Yinks. And Paul is here. Well, here comes Doug Wolfgang, now off turn four. As the camera there picks up on the number five, hey, Chip Gary Hauser, he runs on the tail end of this field. Right okay, now. there's Doug Wolfgang putting her right up on the cushion, doing it for Royal style as he heads down the back stretch. You know, John, a lot of these drivers might just be wanting to survive tonight's race. Doug Wolfgang again puts her right up against the wall. There's Jimmy Nace. He runs in that second And spot. we have a spin out in turn number two. Turn number two. It's a black car right there to the left of the screen. Very hard to see, Randy. Could it be the number four? Yeah, just to the left of the screen there, right there. Dead center. The car okay. actually had a cool things down here just a bit. And a big lead that we saw Doug Wolfgang stretch over Jimmy Nace will, just like last winter's snow, Randy, all gone. Oh, boy. Okay, we'll be back with the restart right after this. Randy, there you can see what's left of that flag station. Uh, you know, no banister, no railing, nothing, just completely wiped away. And we understand that uh, Bob Hockenberry was hit by flying debris and not the race car. That's good. I'll say, okay, we're over on the back stretch with our leader, Doug Wolfgang out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Jimmy Nace has not been able to do anything with Doug Wolfgang here. He just simply drives away, Randy. Well, John, I would say that Doug Wolfgang is definitely the best on a hard, dry track. And well, we have a yellow. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would have to agree with you, Randy, because Labor Day, he sure, uh, you know, showed the guys the way around here on a hard, dry track. And wouldn't it be ironic if Jimmy Nace was to finish second here again tonight behind Doug Wolfgang? Because, you know, last year it was Doug Wolfgang and Jimmy Nace. One thing's for sure, John, there's no shame whatsoever finishing second to Doug Wolfgang. And then tonight, the Wolfgang, should he win, would collect $4,000, and second place still pays $3,000, a very good payday. I'll say. Well, Donnie Kreitz will be trying to make Jim Nace your third place man on this restart. He has been close to Jimmy. We'll watch him, and here comes a car out of the pit area. Uh, no the way gate is shut. The gate is shut. Okay, here we go. Some very close action. 
action off that fourth turn. Randy will watch them as they work their way down through turns one and two. Doug Wolfgang begins to stretch it out once again, John, but Jimmy Nace has Donnie Kreitz all over his tail bites. Okay, here they come off turn four. Doug Wolfgang, Jimmy Nace, and Donnie Kreitz. That is the number seven of Paul Latier. Unbelievably, we got a 1968 on Doug Wolfgang. That's flying on this dry, hard racetrack. Boy, that's for sure. Here they come off turn four. Doug Wolfgang, everything hooked up, working to perfection. There goes Johnny Clays, your third place man. He's down underneath Jimmy Nate. They work their way through turns one and two, Randy. And John, I noticed the car sparking a little bit as he entered the corner. Possibly that car really is set low on the racetrack. your real battle for second spot. There goes Maynard Dix. And Maynard... Maynard runs sixth. Maynard's in that sixth, fifth, fifth position, Randy. Maynard Dix. He, he's needing those pass points if there's pass points tonight. There's your battle right there. Donnie Christ Jr. Right in behind number 26 of Jimmy Nace. Nace has the line John, that seems to be the, the fast way around is right up on the top. Certainly has, Randy, the high groove. That seems to be the fast lane here at Port Royal Speedway. And Doug Wolfgang is using it to perfection here. And we got a car stopping up on turn three, Randy. Up against the fence, that would be the number 90. Of Alan Roof. And uh, very possibly, John, it might be three strikes and you're out in this event. It could be. That is the third time that he's brought out the yellow here. Kind of hard to see. Right there he is on your screen. That's the third time now for, uh, for Alan Ruth. Alan yep. Ruth. I wanted to say Randy Ruth. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's back racing Randy Ruth, by the way, at Sealand Room Speedway. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. Well... We'll be back with more of this Tuscarora 50 right after this. Okay, the number 90 of Alan Ruth being towed back to his pit area. The rest of the field lined up over on turn three. Doug Wolfgang wastes no time pressing on that accelerator pedal. Here they come off turn four, Randy. And Donnie Christ Jr. Well, the base is on the outside. I don't know if he did just yet. Randy will watch him work their way off turn two. And side by side, those cars look like they're welded together, Randy. It looks like Donnie Kreitz might be handling just a little bit better, John. Nace certainly has it down the chute. And Jim Nace pulls back into that second position. One thing's for sure, he's got Donnie Kreitz all over him as they head down the back stretch. Doug Wolfgang, he just simply drives away, Randy. He's out for a Sunday drive, John, and that's about all you can say about that. Wolfgang has this race won if he can maintain the lead here and not break down. There you see Jim Nace up high on the racetrack. And he pulls away from Donnie Christ just a little bit. Okay, we'll watch him as they work their way off turn four. As the camera wide angles, there's Doug Wolfgang. There comes Jimmy Nace and Donnie Christ. Paul is here in Maynard Dink. And we have C.B. Smith Jr. running in that sixth position. Scott Tobias runs seventh. Eighth is Kenny Jacobs. Ninth is Steve Siegel. Tenth is Chris Esch. Right Still there. an awful lot of chargers out there. That's for sure. Well, Randy, when you consider that uh, Steve Siegel, Stevie Siegel is running in ninth position. Hey, that's that, a class field. That says something for the competition. Well, there you just saw Davey Brown Jr. giving Doug Wolfgang uh, the big lead signal there. Yeah, right now, John, his lead doesn't seem to be increasing at the high rate it, it is on each of the restarts. So Doug's conserving that car. Yeah, he's saving it now, Randy. And he can because he's got a, almost a, well, he's got a complete straightaway lead, Randy. Yes, he does. There you see Donnie Price Jr. as he continues to run in that third position. 
Jim Nace doing a fantastic job here tonight, John, in that Camel Express number 26. That's for sure. If he can hang on here and, and bring that car home second to Doug Wolfgang, hey, that's something to write home about, Randy. Yes, it is. And very possibly, John, you know, that little accident that he was involved in may have allowed that team to regroup enough because look how fast they're going now. That's for sure. They've been uh, running real strong ever since he came back. There goes Doug Wolfgang, your leader. He's got a big lead, Randy. And he's got five laps to go, John. Two and a half miles around this Juniata County Oval. And he'll be victorious for the second year in a row in the Tuscarora 50. Yeah, he's coming down the home stretch now, Randy, working only with four laps remaining. Four to go on your leader, Doug Wolfgang. And what a battle we still have back through the pack. Uh, Jimmy Nay still holds off Donnie Wright. Very interesting race there, John. There he is. The, the top sprint car driver in the nation, Doug Wolfgang, works his way through turns one and two. He'll be looking at the two laps to go sign next time around, Randy. He's maintaining that straightaway lead perfectly now, John. Two to go. One more mile for Doug Wolfgang. These are the final two laps of sprint car competition here at Port Royal in 1985. Paul Latier got very close to the uh, bleacher wall here as he came by the last time. So the track beginning to go away now, Randy, but we've only got one more lap remaining. There he is on your screen, Doug Wolfgang. He's just turned this sprint car world inside out, Randy. Nobody's been able to figure him out. Not Steve Kinzer. Not any of the outlaws. There it is. Checker flag. Checker flag. Okay. Doug Wolfgang will pick up the win. There comes Jimmy Nace. Very reminiscent of last year. They'll have to settle for second. Okay, finishing third in car number 69 is Johnny Kreitz. Finishing fourth is the 88 of Maynard Yanks. Fifth, uh, fifth will go to the number seven of Paul Latier. Sixth will go to the 19 of Stevie Smith Jr. Seventh will go to the 880 of Scott Tobias. Eighth will be the 4J of Kenny Jacobs. Ninth will be the two of Steve Siegel, and tenth will be the 17 of Chris Esch. Well, another what a finish. Another textbook performance by Doug Wolfgang, and you can't give him all the credit. Hey, Bob Laker said he'd win 50 features. That puts him one more closer. Yes, it does. To that gold, Davey Brown Jr. and Senior. They've been working on this race car. They've, I think, they've got this whole team now really put together well. They've been just, like I said, I've been saying it all night. They've turned the sprint car world upside down. Nobody can figure them out. You know, Jimmy Nace finishing a second place here again this year to Doug Wolfgang. Well, we're going to um, go down in the winner's circle with Doug Wolfgang and our Speedway announcer, Tom Baker. I have to check with the Wolf himself. Uh, when you are hot, you're hot. Yes, sir. When you're hot, you're hot, and Wolfgang is definitely hot. And we got some big races coming up. Of course, this one of the biggest. Doug Wolfgang, congratulations. Thank you. When you're hot, you're hot. This is, you've won your last 10, correct? I think so. That, have you ever done that? I mean, I can't remember of anyone winning 10 in a row. It was a schedule that you put yourself through. I mean, with the, ra the various racetracks, the various races are, you know, uh, it's, it's phenomenal, really. Well, uh, I won 10 in a row one time in 1977, but to be quite truthful with you, back then I had a real good race car, and it was probably a little bit ahead of its time at that point, and there wasn't that many guys where we run back there that had equipment like I did, and it was, wasn't nothing as compared to now. Uh, I outclassed them as far as equipment-wise. I think this, we won 10 this year, mo uh, mostly due to the fact uh, the mechanics are working with me and Bob Weiger too, uh, giving me They've given me the uh, best opportunity to do the best job I can, and uh, 
for whatever the reasons, and God willing it won't quit, uh, we've been lucky ten times in a row. That's just where it's at. Did you ever think that you would have be this successful when you took the Wickard Rod over? Uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't really want to come out here because I don't. I, I didn't live here, and I knew uh, it's 24 hours one way from my home. And I knew once I got out here that there wasn't going to be no going back and forth because it's too far. You know, it takes you two days in the middle of the week to go back and forth. So the day you're at home, you got enough time to get your laundry done. That's about it. So uh, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to come out. I wasn't really that. It, uh, uh, convinced in my own mind that at the time they had a top flight situation, which they didn't. Uh, their, their cars were crashed and their motors were all blowed up. When I came in, uh, we, we did what we could do with what they had, and he promised me when I came in if I could put up with him, he'd put up with me, and, <laughs> and uh, I never got mad at him, and he never got mad at me, and through hard work and all the boys working hard, uh, we've accumulated some cars and parts that are second to none, so my hats are off to those guys. They're the guys that do it. I just drive. I'm going to make a statement, Doug Wolfgang. Uncle Sam and the Internal Revenue Service is going to love you in 85. Well, I'll tell you what. I was smart enough to make this money, and he's going to be smart enough to come and get it. Okay. <laughs> Doug, we have some gifts for you. There's a hat from Strasser video. Now, for what it's worth, this race is being recorded, and there's a certificate in here for you to have this race on tape. All you have to do is send it to Strausers, and they will see it. you get it. And when you sit back and the old fire next to the old fireplace out in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, this winter, enjoy it. Although there's some instances here that we couldn't enjoy. A gift for you from Stop 35, a gift from you from Lorenz Cornadelli, and we got a whole bunch of stuff back here. And Doug Wolfgang, I'll tell you what. If the cake don't get you, the Coke will. And if the Coke don't get you, the Paps. Oh, he's got Paps Light again tonight. Well, we're all on a diet. We got a bunch of fat people with me, and we like we like light beer. Okay, okay. Fred, get up here, boy. Fred. Doug, well, Doug, you told me, you know, on Labor Day, you know, your, your whole crew was getting kind of fat. So I uh, brought the Paps Light again down again tonight for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Uh, Paps Blue Ribbon is uh, Van May's favorite drink and I'll uh, I'll keep half of this case so when he gets out of that hospital he can drink the rest of it with me. Right. Right. Okay, we have Don Adams here. Congratulations, we got a we got a case of Coca-Cola. This is from Mid-Atlantic Coke. Out of Charmin Sound. I mean we set this down. Okay. okay, we'll set that down right on top of the paps. We have the trophies here. Now we got the young lady here from Go-Getters. Here, you can wipe your brow off with a, with a go-getter's towel, Doug. Boy, we're going to have a hell of a workout whenever I get a chance to get up there, ain't we? You are, I'll tell you. That's why... Now, I'll tell you what. Congratulations. The whole idea with the cake, do you think possibly that might have been the go-getters to get you out of shape so they get you in there? I guess it probably is. <laughs> okay, Don Adams, you have some trophies to, present uh, to make a presentation to? I'd just like to present this to Doug Wolfgang and in appreciation of running here as many times as he did this year. And I certainly am happy and hope that Van May is out of the hospital soon. Thank you. Okay, now do we have Bob Weikert handy? Where is Pappy? Bob, one of these trophies is yours, sir. Well, I didn't drive the car. He did. Well, then, I'll tell you what. That trophy's yours, but if you want to give it to Wolfgang, that's up to you. No, I got a nice little boy back here. I think he'd like to have it. Oh, okay. Bob, I got a question for you. When you formed this race team, did you ever think that it would be this successful? You bet I did. At Williams Grove, the first win I made, I said we'd win 50 features, and I said I'd prove to the people it was the best team that was ever put together, and next year... We'll win a lot more. That's a promise. Okay. Bob Weikert and Doug Wolfgang down here in Victory Lane, ladies and gentlemen. There was a running uh, Tuscarora 50. Wolfgang second consecutive Tuscarora 50 here at the Port Royal Speedway as Wolfgang won it last year and won it going away this year.
Okay, Randy, uh, there you have it. Doug Wolfgang, uh, you know, from what we could tell, uh, he's going to be moving into the area, hopefully. Uh, we may get to see a little bit more of him in the coming years here at the Port Royal Speedway. That's right. I'm sure Doug Wolfgang will be here on uh, any Saturday nights that there's nothing really big going on somewhere with the World of Outlaws or, or Eldora or Knoxville or something like that. He'll always be here for the Tuscarora 50, I'm sure. Well, you know, uh, when Doug Wolfgang puts on a performance like he did here tonight, it's tough for a commentator to come up with enough adjectives. You know, so Doug Wolfgang really just said it all with his performance here tonight. Yes, he did. He's one of the smoothest race drivers I've ever seen. Very possibly he could be the best ever at this stage of his career. And as he said, you know, the 10 feature wins in a row, that's astronomical given that a lot of teams here have as much money as they want to spend on their race car. So he's really not out equipmenting them, but he's doing it with a lot of know-how, a lot of guts, and a lot of uh, good sheer driving ability. That's for sure. There you see Doug Wolfgang walking uh, back to his pit area. He has a pretty good walk. He's pitted way up at the other end of the pits. He's carrying our Strasser Motorsports video cap. In fact, I think he has it on there, Randy. Yeah, he did, and he just gave it to one of the kids. Well, <laughs> he gave it away. He gave our hat away. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure he won't give that tape away when, once he receives that, Randy. Absolutely so. Congratulations to Doug Wolf.